In this video, we're going to talk about draped geometry and how it can be used to take simple flat two-dimensional objects, such as this help sign you see here made out of clothing for a rescue effort, and drape it across the geometry of any terrain, no matter how rocky it is or flat. So you might ask yourself, why do I even need to use draped geometry? For instance, if you need to overlay satellite information or maybe new novel information on top of X-Plane, you can use these draped objects to take an image and literally paint it across the surface as if the terrain was replaced with that image. In this case, we're going to be looking at creating a simple help sign as if someone was out camping and they got lost and now they've, you know, put some clothing around to try to attract some attention. But it could actually be used in real applications, such as training for firefighting. You could take real satellite images of an area that had been burned down and overlay them on top of these places in X-Plane, so that if you're driving a simulator, you can actually see that location and target it, and of course do something about it. Many people take for granted the fact that X-Plane is in Steam, and therefore it is a game. But in reality, it's a simulator. It can be used by people from the FAA down to, you know, your just routine wannabe pilot. Therefore, you can use these features to do all kinds of amazing things. So first off, as I created this little help logo you can see here, all I did was I went online, I found an image of some clothing, and I cut up the different clothes, and then I laid them out according to this. I then went to File, Save, and I made sure that it was a PNG, File, Save As, and uh, the reason we did a PNG file is so that we have transparency. You can also do a Targa file if you want to, but these days PNG typically is the one you want to use. I went ahead and saved this into my Blender folder where I'm going to be accessing this texture. Now I've already gone ahead and tested all this, but why don't we go ahead and start from scratch. So let's go ahead and start a new scene. So File, New, General, don't save. And let's hit A to select everything, X to delete, and hit OK. Now I'm going to do Shift A, and we're going to go ahead and create a plane. Now, in my first attempt to do this, I was making an object that was relatively small. And when I was doing testing, I noticed it was impossible to find. For this, we're going to kind of make this a lot larger than you'd actually expect it to be. So select our object, and let's go ahead and scale this up. So let's hit N so we can see our dimensions over here as we're doing our scaling. And we can just scale this up to something that works. Now, before I had it at 40 meters, and that wasn't quite good enough, I'm going to exaggerate it to something like around 100 meters. That should work for us. Now this isn't necessary, this next part, but I do want to see what the texture looks like on the surface so that I can kind of shrink down the side so it's not one giant polygon. So let's go ahead to shading, as we can see here, and here's our object. And let's go over here to our materials pane, and we're going to click new material. Now let's give this a name. Let's call this um, help sign. Underscore M. Underscore M is just a convention I have. I like to make sure I know what my materials are because I always have my objects and my materials use the same name. I'm also going to rename the object to help sign to coincide with the material. Next up, we're going to need to set up this object. So let's uh, hit Shift A and under search, let's just type in texture. There's image texture right there. Move this over here. We're going to hit open now. And under open, we're going to migrate to the location that we're currently at. So let's go to X plane, blender, and there's my help closed up PNG. We're going to connect the color of this to the base color right there. And you can see it right there. And really, that's as far as you need to go. You might ask, George, how come it's not transparent? Well, making it transparent is actually a lot more steps inside a Blender than we need to cover, because this is not a Blender tutorial. But if you wanted to, we could go down in the material over here under Settings. And one thing to always turn on, especially when you're dealing with flat two-dimensional geometry, is backface culling. Just to make sure, you'll notice as we go to the wrong side of the polygon, the inside, so to speak, it becomes invisible. Sometimes you can accidentally flip this thing 90 degrees around, and if you don't have backface culling on, you might never notice that your object will never be rendered. Under Blend Mode, I'm going to go ahead and change this to Alpha Blend. Now it's still not showing things properly, and that's because we'd actually need a few more steps uh, to make transparency work inside a Blender. If you want to follow along, feel free, but it's not required to get anything to work. Let's go ahead and hit Shift A, and what we're going to want to do is we're going to do Transparent. So here is Translucent, and we want Transparent BSDRF. Now, to move these around, uh, if you, I'm double-clicking on it to free it up. If you didn't double-click on it, it might all be one giant object and you'll move it as one block, so make sure you double click them. The next thing we need to do is mix the transparent BSDF with the, uh, the principal one. So once again, hit Shift A and Cert. Let's do a mix shader right there. And you'll notice it has two inputs for each shader. We're gonna take the transparent one and this output here for BSDF and put it in the top part. Then we're gonna take this one down here, this BSDF, and put it in the bottom part. Go ahead and click on this material output right here on their surface and detach that for the moment. So now we have this 
help close PNG's color information going into the principled BSDF, what we want to do is take the alpha information, and no, we're not going to put it into the transparent one. We're actually going to take the alpha and put it into this parameter right here under the mix shader. With that, we can now connect the output of this shader to the surface of this one, and you'll notice that it now appears transparent in our view. Now, you might be in one of these other view modes, so make sure you're in the proper one. Click around to make sure it works. And uh, you might also be in a different renderer as well. So under the rendering property over here, you can choose EV, Workbench, or Cycles. Probably going to want to stick with EV for now. But with that, we can see the transparency of our object very clearly, so we know everything works. A little pain in the butt to set up transparencies in Blender. You now know how to do it if you want to. Now next up, I'm going to adjust the uh, size of this object. So what I'm going to do is let's hit this S key for scale. And I actually want to constrain this to one direction. You know what, let's get out of this mode. Let's go back to Layout and choose a setting to render that, well, allows us to see this texture. Having this object selected, I'm then going to hit the S key. And you'll notice now that we have RGB equals XYZ. Those are these, these axes next to us. So if we want to constrain to the green axis, that is Y, we'll click Y on the keyboard. What we can do now is kind of move that down a bit if we want to. That's a little bit better. Now let's go back to our UV editing mode up here. And this allows us to grab these UVs. And if we want to, we can scale them like before by hitting S and then the Y key. And then we can move these in on these sides. And once again, make sure we're looking at this in the correct viewport. And this allows us to make sure that we're sampling from the right part of the texture. So I can hit G and then Y again and move this up a little bit. And then once again, we'll hit S and then we'll hit Y again and kind of scale that down. And now you can see I've got this fully filling out this area. Now, once again, you might want to take more care and make sure there isn't any stretching. If you notice, I'm kind of stretching things a little bit more vertically than they really should be, but no one will really be able to tell. So now that I've done all that, it's time for us to check out some X-Plane settings to make sure everything works. First thing I'm going to do is go under my Material tab for this object. And this is something I didn't show in the last video. And that is under the X-Plane portion of the Material tab, you actually have a lot of interesting options. One of them is Blend, Alpha Blend, which we're going to have turned on. The difference between Alpha Blend and Alpha Cutoff has to do with how things are blended together, or if they're not blended at all, and literally you cut off what is visible and not visible by a value or a range. In this case, you can specify that as a value between 0 and 1, and this depends on your texture itself. I want to choose Alpha Blend right now, and you might want to do Alpha Blend if you have nice transitions along the edges. In reality, this one's pretty harsh, these transitions, therefore I could get away with just using an Alpha Cutoff if I wanted to. But we'll leave it at Blend for the moment. Now I don't need to cast shadows because this is going to be flat up against the ground, so we can turn that off. What I do need to do though is turn on Draped right here. Now if we were dealing with the PBR pipeline in X-Plane 11, you would also check the Normal Metalness option here if necessary. You might be tempted to come down here and select this Polygon Offset value if you're working in X-Plane 10 or below, I believe, and this was a way of you dealing with something called, uh, the developer calls it Z-Thrashing, but I've always known it as Z-Fighting, where you literally have two surfaces fighting the Z-Depth of the information in the camera. Uh, this would be a way of offsetting one from the other. However, the developers tell you it's a little bit finicky, so it's best not to mess with it. That's all we need to do with the materials. Let's go over to the object settings for this and check out the X-Plane portion. Here we have exportable object, so let's go ahead and click that. Open this dropdown, make sure we name this. I'm gonna name this help sign, just like our object. Under type, we're gonna go here and do a scenery object. Now, unlike before, we're not gonna use default night or normal spec. Instead, we're gonna use draped and draped normal. So here I'm gonna select draped click on this object here, and once again, navigate to our location and help clothes. Now you'll notice in addition to the draped texture, we also have a draped normal texture that we could be using. And yes, you could use the PBR workflow if you wanted to, but that's kind of overkill for a flat object. I'm just interested in getting the lighting information on the surface. You could use many different programs to take a texture you've generated like the one you see here and create a normal map version of it if you wanted to. Photoshop, for instance, has an old plugin that you can download and install as a filter if you wanted to. You could also use something like Substance Alchemist, where we can create a new object. Let's just say uh, clothes, and we don't need all of this stuff. We'll just do PBR roughness, hit create, and very quickly we can generate something new by going to create, and we can drag an image right here. So let's find our picture under and help clothes. And we're going to say we want to do a bitmap to a material. Hit OK. And there's our material with the alpha map right there. Now Substance Alchemist will go through and 
based upon the parameters you pass in, will generate this PBR material for you. Now, obviously, this is not rubber, and I really don't need to fiddle around with any of these settings, but I'm just going to pick something like fabric up at the top if I wanted to. We can also choose a roughness. Now, since it's clothing, the roughness is probably going to be very high, so we'll set it somewhere way high up there. We can also see it imports the image in here, and then it converts this bitmap to a material you can see right here. If we switch from 3D mode to 2D mode, we can actually see the different maps that are created right here. If we go to normal map, you can see it's all right. It's got that harsh outline across the surface, which is something we might want to go in and touch up a bit. And of course, you can go back into the different parameters and adjust them. But once again, this is not a tutorial on how to use this program. I'm just showing you different options. There is another cheaper alternative. And that's one that I used to use a long time ago called MindText 2. There's also variations of this that are online for free that you can use in your browser. So feel free to do a Google search. I'll go ahead and open one up in MindText and we're gonna be using a diffuse map. Diffuse, not albedo, because it's also capturing and lighting information. Choose our clothing. And here we can see our clothes with a generated normal map. And this one did a little bit of a better job creating it for us. Tons of options for you to go through here and fix all the different problems. But all we really wanna do is export this map out. So why don't we go ahead and do that? So under normal, I'm gonna hit save this map. And we'll save it under here as a PNG as well. And I'll call this help clothes underscore normal. Enter. Now one question you might have that I know I have right now is, how do I know if this is OpenGL or DirectX format? And I don't know. What I would probably do to make sure everything's safe is load this up in Substance Painter with the asset and then make sure I re-export it out setting it to OpenGL. That way I'm sure it's the correct orientation. Now that we have our normal map, if you want it, we can go to Draped Normal, choose the File folder, and go back to our directory. Here we have Help Close underscore Normal. We have no levels of detail yet. We haven't covered that, so we're going to ignore it for the moment. Now we do have layers over here, and you'll notice there's a draped layer, and we have this set to None right now. For right now, I'm just going to set it to Terrain, because that's the layer I'm going to be draping it on. However, we might, depends on how many of these I put down, but you might run into artifacts where uh, the draped layer does not appear on top of other ones. In which case, what we can actually do is go to draped layer group offset and choose a value greater than zero, maybe one, two, or three. Really depends on uh, well, what you see interfering with the object. For right now, I'm gonna set it equal to zero just to see if we get any of those anomalies and I can show you them in this video. Now, before we export, let's go ahead and go to file, save as, and I'm going to save this as help tutorial. Okay, save as. Now before we export, we wanna go through a checklist and make sure we've applied our transforms just like before. Our rotations are zero, but our scales are all wonky. So let's go ahead and hit control A. And I wanna go ahead and hit all transforms. You'll notice my scales are now set to one. Now that I've done that, let's go ahead to our scenery and hit export OBJs. Now if we come back over to our directory, we'll see that we have a help sign.obj file. Now let's go ahead and right click on that, edit with Notepad++, and we can take a look inside. Notice we have no shadows. Here are our two textures, the specular value, the group layer of terrain with no offset, and then of course, all the different vertices that make up our object. And finally, most importantly, adder underscore draped. Go ahead and grab these three objects, copy, and we're gonna bring them over into our X-Plane directory. Now, if you didn't watch the last video, we had gone ahead and created a new scenery package. You'll need to make sure you choose the X-Plane folder that you have installed so it loads up all these different assets. Then create a new scenery package, and then once you've done that, go ahead and hit open. Before we do that, however, we're gonna to wanna to come over into our directory, and I'm gonna create a new folder and call this help. And then we're gonna paste in our model and two textures. Now I'm gonna come over here and click open. So here's our empty world. Let's zoom into somewhere mountainous. This looks kind of uh, rocky, somewhere around here. Zoom in nice and far. And uh, just like before, we're going to establish a quick airport just so we can fly into some location. Let's hit create airport. Let's give this a name, making sure we follow the naming conventions. Let's call this mission command. And mission command over here is going to have an airport ID of mission command XXX. That should be easy to remember. We also need to go to airport add metadata, and we're going to add a GUI label. What label we add is depending upon what kind of objects we have inside of our airport. If we have 3D objects, we'll use 3D. If we have only 2D objects though, then we'll use 2D. I only plan on having a runway in my airport, so I'm just going to leave this as 2D. Let's select runway, and I will pick a point here, and pick a point down here. 
and we've created our runway. I'm also going to create an exclusion zone to try to level things out a bit and get rid of anything that might be in our way. And I'll choose something along this size. And under exclusions, I'm going to choose objects, facades, forests, beaches, roads, lines, strings, and we'll do drape polygons as well. We don't want anything in this area where we're going to be taking off and landing. Now that we've done that, let's go over to local, open this up. And what you'll notice is we have a separate folder, so you can structure things in directories to organize stuff. We can go to help, and there we have our help sign.obj. Now if we see it down here and everything looks fine, then we know we did a great job inside of Blender. When we select that object, it automatically chooses the object mode right here. If not, make sure you just click it yourself. And then we can click anywhere and place these objects. Once again, you might want to adjust the Z forward vector or in Blender, the Y forward vector, so that when you click and drag, it's more intuitive. Personally, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I'd probably want it the opposite way, but this works just fine for now. And all I'm gonna do is uh, kind of go a little crazy and uh, put helps all over the place. Perfect. All right, with that, we can go ahead and save things out. Now we have mission command, which is our airport, and the help signs we might actually not want in our airport. Reason for that is, as soon as we put an object file in our airport, it turns the GUI type from 2D to 3D. Watch, you'll see what I mean if I go to File, Export Scenery. What you'll see here is that we get a warning, metadata key GUI label does not match current scenery content, which is three-dimensional. Let's go ahead, grab all these scenery objects and just move them outside of our airport because really they're not part of the airport itself. Now let's go ahead and hit File, Export Scenery Pack, and you'll notice that things work just fine. It's up to you whether or not to include them. However, do note that if you try to move one of these objects really far away, like I'm talking way out here, like somewhere way off this area, the issue is that if you put this object under your airport and try to export, it's going to think your airport is impossibly large. Now let's go ahead, file and export scenery packs, make sure that's okay. Hit save. We can go ahead and minimize this for now. And let's go ahead and open up X-Plane. So here's X-Plane. Let's go ahead and hit play. Now let's go to new flight. And what do we call it? MCXX, I think, mission command. Yes, there it is. We'll choose clear weather and the time of day. Well, morning's fine. And let's go ahead and start. So here's our runway. It's on some not so nice land. Let's go ahead and hit Shift-4 and then C. And I'm gonna use the arrow keys to move up and around. And if we go up high enough, what we'll see is our nice little help signs all over the place. Now you'll notice in a few cases, they don't quite pop above the uh, terrain, which might be an issue. So here we go. We can see right there, it's really not doing a very good job there, but it's doing okay in these other locations. So what we're gonna do is actually go into Blender and modify that property. So now under Blender, if we click on our object and go to the object settings, scroll on down, you'll notice we have the draped layer group offset, which we had set to zero. Let's just pop this up to maybe one for now. Hit save, go back to scene properties, hit export OBJs, and then let's take a quick look in this folder. So here's our help sign, right click, edit with notepad plus plus. And what you'll notice now is that adder layer group draped terrain now has a value of one instead of zero. So really, there was no reason to export it. We could just come over to our object inside of the X-Plane directory and go ahead and modify it here. So change that to a one and hit save. Close that. And now that the object's saved out, we really shouldn't have to do anything else. So let's go back into X-Plane now and check out what happened. Once again, shift four C and then we'll fly up. And what we'll notice now is that it looks like all of the help signs are perfectly elevated above the terrain. Now I have not gone through and read exactly which layer corresponds to what. So depending upon what you're doing and where you are, whether it's beaches and whatnot, you might need to crank that value up higher. But as you can see, it's really easy to make modifications directly to the file so you don't have to do it inside a blender if you don't want to. And you can test to see what works and what doesn't. So once again, this is a really interesting technique to overlay things directly on the surface of the terrain. And there are lots of possibilities. Imagine if you're excavating a quarry or you're seeing it slowly develop over time. You could add those in procedurally, uh, maybe write a plugin to allow you to iterate through them. Or in the case of like this help one, this would be great if you're doing simulators for rescue or you could fly a helicopter or a small plane over different areas trying to search for these different help signs. Now, if you look, compare this help with these cars, obviously this person is a giant and wearing huge clothing. But if you get up really, really high, it becomes incredibly difficult to find these signs. 
So it'd be an interesting training scenario to fly around and try to look for these things or creating like small rock piles that people might have put together or rocks that spell out help as well. There are millions of different ideas for how you can use this. I've just shown you one. If you find these explain tutorials interesting, let me know. And if you have a topic in particular that you'd like me to explore, also go ahead and comment. I'll see you all next time. So long and goodbye.